It's 40,000 years ago, deep in the Ice Age. The world is a wild, frozen frontier. Mammoths roam the tundra, saber-toothed cats lurk in the shadows, and survival demands wit, courage, and cooperation. Among us are our closest cousins, the Neanderthals, not the brutish cavemen of old cartoons, but a people with stories, skills, and souls as vibrant as our own. Yet for centuries, we've misunderstood them, painting them as primitive shadows of ourselves. Tonight, by this fire, let's unravel the truth about Neanderthals, clear the myths, and discover a people far more fascinating than we've been led to believe. Stick with me. This journey through prehistoric times will change how you see our ancient relatives. Let's start with one of the biggest myths, that Neanderthals were our ancestors, trudging along a straight path to become us, Homo sapiens. Picture evolution not as a ladder, but as a sprawling tree, its branches twisting and splitting in every direction. Around 350,000 years ago, from the trunk of Homo erectus, two branches emerged, one leading to Neanderthals, another to us. We didn't descend from them, we were neighbors, cousins sharing the prehistoric world. This idea challenges the old March of Progress image. You know, that iconic line of apes gradually standing upright, ending with a modern human. That image, born from 19th century ideas of orthogenetic evolution, suggests life moved toward a predetermined goal of advancement. But that's a myth. Evolution is messy, driven by chance and adaptation, not a quest for perfection. Neanderthals weren't lesser than us, they were perfectly suited to their world, just as we were to ours. Their branch thrived for hundreds of thousands of years, adapting to the brutal cold of Ice Age Europe with ingenuity we're only now beginning to appreciate. When I first learned about evolution, I fell into the trap of thinking it was a straight line, with us as the pinnacle. But studying Neanderthals opened my eyes. They weren't a rough draft of humanity. They were a masterpiece in their own right, shaped by the same forces that crafted us. This perspective shift makes their story not just a footnote, but a vital chapter in the human saga. Now let's step into a Neanderthal camp. It's a frosty morning and a group huddles near a fire stitching hides into capes. You might imagine them covered in thick, shaggy hair, like a mammoth or a musk ox to survive the cold. That's a common myth, but it doesn't hold up. Neanderthals, stockier and stronger than us, likely had skin much like ours, not a pelt of fur. Why? Think about animals in cold climates today, like polar bears or woolly mammoths. They rely on thick, fat layers and fur for insulation. But Neanderthals? No evidence suggests they had excessive body hair or fat deposits like those beasts. Instead, they were innovators. Archaeological finds show they wore simple clothing capes and wraps made from animal hides. By the time our ancestors arrived in Europe, they were sewing more complex garments with bone needles, but Neanderthals weren't far behind. Their clothing was practical, not primitive. Excess hair would have been a liability. Imagine sweating during a hunt in sub-zero temperatures. Sweat freezing into ice on a hairy body could spell death. Neanderthals were smarter than that. They used fire, shelters, and hides to stay warm, proving their resourcefulness. I used to picture Neanderthals as these furry, bear-like figures, but learning they crafted clothing flipped that image. It's humbling to think they faced the same icy challenges we would have, using tools and brains instead of biology. It makes me wonder, what other skills did they master that we've overlooked? Let's travel to 1911, to a cave in France called La Chapelle aux Saints. Anthropologists uncover a Neanderthal skeleton, dubbed the Old Man. He's hunched with a forward thrust skull, bent hips, and a divergent big toe, a perfect caveman. This find cemented the image of Neanderthals as stooped, ape-like brutes. But here's the twist. The old man was, well, old. At 40, he was ancient for a Neanderthal, equivalent to an 80-year-old today. He suffered from severe arthritis and had lost most of his teeth which skewed his posture. Early researchers like Marceline Boulle got it wrong. The old man's condition wasn't typical, it was exceptional. 
By 1957, scientists realized his hunched posture was due to disease, not species traits. Yet the brutish Neanderthal image stuck, fueling pop culture depictions of club-wielding cavemen. The reality? Neanderthals stood as upright as we did, their bodies built for endurance in a harsh world. This misconception shows how one flawed interpretation can shape centuries of misunderstanding. It's a reminder to question what we know about the past. If we'd found a healthier Neanderthal first, would we still see them as primitive? It's a lesson in how science evolves, correcting itself as new evidence emerges. Now let's visit another cave, Shanidar in modern-day Iraq, 40,000 years ago. Here lies Nandi, a Neanderthal, whose story shatters the myth of them as unfeeling brutes. Nandi was old, 4050, and his life was a catalog of pain. A blow to his head left him blind in one eye. Bone growth blocked his ears, likely causing deafness and agony. His right arm was withered, possibly from a childhood injury or amputation, leaving him partially paralyzed with a painful limp. Yet Nandi lived a long life. How? His injuries, healed over years, suggest his community cared for him. They fed him, protected him, and ensured his survival despite disabilities that would have made him a liability in a world of predators and scarcity. This wasn't a one-off. Other Neanderthal sites show similar care for the sick and elderly, proving their compassion was widespread. Nandi's story hits me hard. It's easy to think of prehistoric life as brutal, every person for themselves. But Neanderthals show us that even in the harshest times, community mattered. They valued their own just as we do, reminding us that humanity's roots run deep with empathy. Picture a cave in Spain 64,000 years ago. A Neanderthal dips a hand in red ochre, pressing it against the rock. Nearby, another paints geometric shapes and animals in black and red. These cave paintings, discovered in 2018, are the oldest known, predating Homo sapiens in Europe by 20,000 years. Neanderthals weren't just surviving, they were creating, expressing ideas through art. This discovery upends the myth that Neanderthals lack sophistication. Their art suggests a rich inner life with symbols and stories we can only guess at. It's a glimpse into a culture that valued beauty and meaning challenging the idea that they were intellectually inferior. When I heard about these paintings, I imagined a Neanderthal artist, torch in hand, creating something to outlast them. It's a powerful reminder that creativity isn't unique to us. They had dreams, fears, and stories just like we do. What else did they leave behind that we haven't found? One final myth. Neanderthals couldn't speak, limited to grunts and growls. Recent studies of their hyoid bone, a small bone crucial for speech, reveal it's nearly identical to ours. Their throats, though squatter, could produce complex sounds, possibly high-pitched, but capable of language. They likely planned hunts, shared stories, and communicated as intricately as we did. Imagine a Neanderthal family by the fire, voices rising in a strange but familiar cadence planning tomorrow's hunt or mourning a lost companion. Their language wasn't primitive, it was functional, adapted to their world. The idea of Neanderthal speech fascinates me because it bridges the gap between us. Language is so central to our identity, and knowing they likely had it makes them feel less like distant cousins and more like kin. It's a call to rethink how we define human. Let's make this vivid with a story inspired by evidence. Meet Kael, a Neanderthal woman in a valley 50,000 years ago. Kael was injured in a hunt, her leg crushed by a falling boulder. Unable to walk, she relied on her clan. Her brother Tor brought her food while her daughter Lila tended her wounds. Despite her pain, Kael taught Lila to flake flint tools, passing on knowledge. The clan's care kept Kael alive for years her presence strengthening their bond. This mirrors finds like Nandi's, showing Neanderthal's care wasn't just survival, it was love. And brother, in a cave in Spain, a young Neanderthal named Arrow paints a bison on the wall. He's no artist by trade, 
but the act connects him to his ancestors, whose handprints dot the cave. His work, found millennia later, proves Neanderthals had a legacy beyond survival. These stories, grounded in evidence, make Neanderthals relatable. They weren't just fossils, they were people with struggles, joys, and connections. Kale's story reminds me of my grandmother, who, despite illness, taught me family recipes. Arrow's art echoes artists today, creating to be remembered. These parallels make the past feel alive. As the fire dies down, let's reflect. Neanderthals weren't the grunting, hunched cavemen of old myths. They were our equals in compassion, creativity, and resilience, thriving in a world we can barely imagine. By debunking these misconceptions, we reclaim their humanity and, in turn, deepen our own. The lesson here is simple but profound. Don't judge the past by outdated assumptions. Neanderthals teach us that humanity isn't defined by tools or language alone, but by our capacity to care, create, and connect. Next time you hear a story about the primitive past, question it. Look closer and you'll find a world as rich as ours. Let's honor our cousins by seeing them for who they truly were, people just like us.